What it do y'all, it's your girl Makeup and Travel and for today's video, your girl is here to bring you a four looks, one palette with the beautiful Tiny Marvels palette right here. I have already done a first impression and swatch uh, video so I will have that linked up ahead um, but I also automatically knew I just had to do more looks with this baby so that people who are my complexion or people who are really into color like I am can tell is this a palette for them or not. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this video I'm not gonna make this a long intro at all if you're interested in this particular look this is my fourth and final look but all of the other ones I really did enjoy do comment down below which one is your favorite I would love to know and yeah that's it let's get into it hey guys so I just uploaded my first impressions for this palette today and I wanted to go ahead and get started on my three looks one palette I'm really really excited as you can see I've already done one eye if I'm looking in my viewfinder it looks like you can't really see what's going on I've been having a lot of problems lately with my color balance situation so I'm sorry if you can't really see the benefit of the look but I really enjoy it and I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how I created it today. So I am just going to add a little bit more primer because I feel like my primer did dry up. And today I'm using my um, what is it makeup by Yolanda uh, primer and this is in the shade E which is the darkest shade that she has right now this is pretty much a colored version of like my nomad cosmetics primer or if you've never tried them think of kind of like the urban decay um, primer potion I feel like these are all equivalents um, in my opinion they were trying to dupe the P. Louise uh, primer and since I do not support P. Louise um, I figured why not plus it's a black owned brand so I'm happy I added just a little bit too much so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to tap off the excess okay I think that's good so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go into Flutter By, which is the really nice uh, corally pink shade. I used this in my first impression and I'm just going to build her up in my inner transition area. I am using a really fluffy brush. If I wanted this shade to be even more pigmented and just like really show up, I could use a more compact brush, but I like how it came out. so. And I also don't mind slowly building either. Just making sure to blend. Okay, so I think that's good for right now. I might add some more color. Um, later on we will see next the other kind of transition color that I'm going to use is Jewel B which is the true lilac in this palette and that is just going to be my outer transition color and once again we're just going to work on just building the shade up Okay, so these are really soft transition tones, but that's all I want. I just want something nice and soft, but also beautiful and colorful. So, yeah, like I said, if you want to build them up more, I'm sure you can. I just like the softness that I provided already. Then what I went into was Bugaboo, which is a shade that I used in my first impression. And I'm going to make this my true crease shade. 
all throughout my crease. So it's going to deepen up both transition colors. And once again, I'm just going to work on just building this shade and blending. And just like last time, I always go back and just kind of readjust most those transition colors a little bit. And so I just take the brush and just add a little bit more in the spots where I want to. Just so it's really just peeking out above that, um, what is it? Bugaboo shade that I just laid down. So that's what we're doing right now with the three shades i hope i hope that you guys can see what's going on then what i'm gonna do is take an even smaller blending brush and i am gonna go into spider and i am just going to really just deepen out my outer v and my crease area with this shade And the effect, it's going to make it just like a look like a deeper purple overall and not actually like a brown, which is what I liked. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to look like there was an actual brown in my crease. I wanted it to look like it's just a darker purple that just got it blended out previously. And if you need to, like always, just go back into the previous shade. And just blend a little bit more. All right, I'm liking this. A lot so now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and cut my lid um, and I cut my lid with my this is not the right <laughs> I cut my lid with my NYX glitter glue and just a nice flat brush so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quickly and then I'll be back to actually apply the the shimmers to my lid Alrighty, so I just went ahead and cut my crease, like I said, um, and then I also just took the brush that I had the darker brown shade and just blended the outer edge of that um, cut shade or the cut crease just so it didn't come out too stark. Then I'm going to apply just a little bit of the shade Web onto my brush and come to find out this is actually a dual chrome. I didn't even see it when I swatched it, but it definitely has a blue hint to it so it's not a true white metallic and I'm just going to use this just to really define my cut crease and I'm going to keep working with the same brush and then I'm going to go into Marvel and this is going to be my main lid shade. Oops. So I took a little bit too much of that. Up, so let's go ahead and fix that. There we go. 
And like I said, we're just gonna make sure that blend is nice. All right, now it's time to do my lower lash line. I also just wanna take any fallout that may have occurred, brush it off, we're good to go. Now I'm gonna take an eyeliner brush from e.l.f. and I'm just gonna go into spider and that is going to go right along my lower lash line. Next, I'm just gonna take the shade Bugaboo and Bugaboo is going to blend out the outer kind of half or so of my lower lash line and I do connect it up top like I always do. Then I'm gonna clean off my brush and then we're gonna go into Flutter By, which is the peachier shade. And that's gonna blend out my inner half. All right, so we're almost done. I just need to find the brush again. There it goes. For my inner corner highlight, I actually mixed two shades. So I mixed wet web and fire butts. I mixed these two shades together to create my inner corner highlight. I don't know why I just felt like doing it. I didn't want to be too out there with a really bold green, but I also didn't want to be so basic to still use the same shade that I cut um, my lid with. So I'm pretty much done. All I have to do is do my liners and all that jazz. I will zoom out. I'll tell you guys more about my look and show you kind of a close up look at it as well, complete. So I will be right back. Alrighty guys, so you just saw my close up of my look. I really enjoy it. I think it's really cool, really fun, and something that you wouldn't necessarily expect looking at this palette that you could accomplish. It's not too, too colorful. It's pretty neutral, but it's also fun. So I'm really, really happy that I was able to go ahead and do this look today. In case you're wondering kind of the main stuff going on with my look, as always, I combined both of my Project Pan foundation um, my Fenty 470 and my Becca Skin Love in Espresso. Then, um, what else is major? I have my Tower Beauty 28 Blush and Beach Please by itself. So I was able to warm up the product enough that it actually applied pretty pigmented on my complexion. All I did was set it with a translucent powder so there is no product on top. I actually do enjoy it immensely. On top of that, I have my Beauty Bakery Blush Highlighter in the shade 24 Champagne Diet, this beauty right here. Um, bronzer, I have my Prime Beauty Bronzer. Everything else is normal. Oh, lips. I have a combination of lip products on my lips today. I have my MAC Liner in Chestnut. And then on top of that, I have my NYX Lip Suede in Cold Brew. So that's pretty much my whole um, makeup look anything else just check down below but those are the major things that people tend to be interested in um, so this is the first look stay tuned if you're interested in seeing the next two looks hey guys so I'm here to do look number two I'm very very excited as you can see I've already done one eye already primed my other eye and today's primer I'm using is my Nomad Cosmetics primer I always this is pretty much one of my go-to primaries. I don't really have many primers, but yeah, it's one of my go-tos. So what I'm gonna do first is go into Love Bug, and this is going to be my transition shade. And I don't really need the shade to be too, too um, bright or too kind of Pam because I'm gonna, it's gonna be enough depth and diversity that it should just pop on its own. Then I went into a really, really small Wayne Goss brush and I went into Spider and Spider is going to be my crease shade. Thank you. 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and build my lower lash line. Just gonna take that same shade, Spider, right against my lower lash line, all the way across. And of course, connect it up top. You guys know I always connect my lower lash line to my upper lash line. I, I just can't not do that. And then I take that same fluffy brush I used in my transition color, go right back into Love Bug. I do make sure to really tap off my brush because I don't want too much of product on there. But then that's what I blend out my lower lash line with. not bad not bad okay so now it's time to do my lid what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more NYX glitter glue on my hand because I don't have enough and I'm gonna cut my lid and then I'll be right back alrighty so off camera I just cut my lid like I said I also went ahead and took that brush that I had spider on and just blended my outer part of my uh, glitter glue now I'm gonna go on my lid with the shade mantis and I'm just gonna use the same brush that I cut my lid with, which is an Isom brush. I love these brushes to death. And we're just gonna pack this baby on over the whole lid. And I'm just gonna try and blend in between the black or the brown and the green. Adding no additional product, just going back and forth between the two brushes. I like that, I like it a lot. Okay, dokey. Now it's time to do my inner corner highlight. And for that, I am going to go into web. And just a flyer. And this is the finished look. It was pretty simple, but also I think it's like really, really nice, creative and cute. I do need to put my waterline liners in. So I use my Maybelline Master Precise in the brown and then a ColourPop liner in the shade Pup Poopy. I also, Puppy, I don't know why I always do that. I always do that. Then I have to do my mascaras, put on some lip products, put on a blush, and I will be right back. Alrighty, y'all. So your girl is done. I have now completely finished look number two. I am happy. I am just loving how I'm really exploring color a little bit more. I felt like at one point I was very safe, very subtle when it came to my lip products. And I'm getting back to really just putting on some crazy lip products to go with my crazy eye looks, to go with my crazy blush. If you're wondering what's on my lips today, it is actually a Anastasia lipstick and it is in dusty mauve. I couldn't remember what brand it was but I knew I had a shade that I wanted. I didn't apply it all the way around my lips. I kind of just dabbed it in the middle and just frayed it out to the outer edges. So this is the finished look for look number two. If you're interested in seeing look number three, maybe not the last look. I might try and do four looks then Whichever way, if you're look, interested in seeing look number three, then just keep watching. Okay guys, so I'm here to do the third and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the final look for this three looks, one palette. Um, I've already done my one eye as you can see and I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing the other eye. So I am gonna prime with my Playing With Yolanda primer in E. Oh, did I even put any <laughs> There we go. Just gonna really work that all over my eye. Uh -huh. 
Okay, and the first thing that I decided to do was go ahead and use Tree Hopper, which is the lightest brown, and I'm using that to set my um, under my brow and be like a highlight shade. I probably will never use the shade in my crease, but it works for that purpose. And that's why I actually cut my brow earlier today um, with my MAC Paint Pot to be able to see how that works under my eye. And I think for me, it's bright, but it's not obscene. So I actually do like that shade. Then what I went ahead and did is I went into the shade, what is it? Death, Death Moth. And I just put that all in my transition area. And of course, blended it out as well. It is actually a dark um, shadow. That is, I guess, the one thing I'm surprised at the depth of all these browns. I felt like there's a huge jump between tree hopper and like death moth which is i would say the next lightest brown in this palette um so that's a little surprising but i am mad at it because it's beautiful for me then i'm gonna go into walking stick which is i believe a little bit darker and a different undertone i have i it feels like it has like a more greeny yellow undertone and i'm just gonna put this right smack dab into my crease and i am going to go ahead and put it on my outer beat area as well going beautifully so far last crease color i'm going to go into spider and this is just going to deepen up everything so both my outer v area and my crease as well Now I'm just gonna do the exact same arrangement, just backwards on my lower lash line. didn't actually cut my crease I just didn't feel like it today I'm gonna go into BB which is that beautiful beautiful gold and it feels like it's a gold with a green undertone I don't know if it's because of the mattes or if that's just the true undertone to it but I do enjoy it and just gonna apply it right onto my lid and feather it out okay then for my inner corner highlight I actually ended up unfortunately combining two shades I didn't intend to but it's all good I ended up swatching both web and marble and putting both of them in my inner corner so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that to add a little color I just I had to so I took mantis and I just added that really quickly right here And that's it that's the finished look i just need to hop off camera to do both liners mascara and i will just zoom out so you guys can see my finished look Alrighty, so this is the finished look 
and I'm happy. I'm happy how this came out. I wanted to go ahead and do a more neutral basic look and I'm actually honestly surprised that none of the shimmers are very like neutral work appropriate because I felt like the mattes those matte browns work beautifully and they're really nice and work appropriate but none of the shimmers truly are a lot of the shimmers are very colorful and kind of interesting so that's that I was gonna do a review after but I want to test out using tree hopper actually in my crease and then deepening up with death moth I want to see how drastic of a difference that is so if you guys are interested in seeing a dedicated review just let me know by the time I test that this out and I get this video up I will already be able to do a dedicated review but I just wanted to do one more look should I just do four looks I'm just gonna do four looks Ooh, child my hair my hair <laughs> I, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to do four looks. So let's go for the fourth look where I'm really going to test out that difference because um, I just really want to know. So roll film. Alrighty guys, so I'm here to do my first, fourth and final look with this palette. I did go ahead and prime with my Nomad Cosmetics primer and we are going to just jump right on in. And we are of course going to go into Tree Hopper. And this is going to go into my transition area. All right. After that, what I'm going to do is just take a little bit smaller of a blending brush and I am going to go into walking stick just to diffuse the shade into my crease. Now what I'm going to do is just take a smaller brush and go back right into walking stick and just continue to deepen out my crease. And with an even smaller brush then I am gonna go into spider and spider is just going to help to deepen out my outer V mainly and very small amount into my crease but mainly I'm keeping it in this outer V area so my crease is built now we are going to take a shader brush and we are going to go into scarab and just put this all over my lid Now what I'm going to do is actually take a liquid eyeshadow and this is from Pixi and this is in the shade Pixi Green. 
I'm just going to put it right on the back of my hand and I am just going to apply a thin layer right on top of Scarab. And this just helps to give Scarab a little bit more dimensionality and also I just really was in the mood to use a liquid eyeshadow today. And then what I'm going to do is go into web. No, actually, let me do my lower lash line first. My bad. So we're going to go back into that really small brush and we're going to go into spider. Then we're going to take the smaller of the two brushes I used walking stick on and just blend out that lower lash line. And then we're going to take the shade, the brush that I used tree hopper on and blend her out too. Okay, quick and to the point. Now we're ready to do our inner corner and for the inner corner we're going to go into web and just put down a base. And then we're going to go into yet another liquid eyeshadow, which is from Stila, and it is Yellowtails. We're going to flip our brush to the unused side, and we're going to tap this right on top. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the two before I get to the shade that I want. It looks like I don't have enough yellow in this application this time. This is one of the few liquid eyeshadows that I actually use quite a bit, so that could explain it. There we go. I put enough on the brush now. And then we're just going to blend slightly onto my lid. Just so things are halfway seamless. So I am gonna hop off camera now. I'm gonna do my liner and I'm gonna do my mascara. Everything else is done on my face. I'm just gonna come back so you guys can see the finished look and then I will tell you guys what the rest of the stuff is that's on my face and all that jazz. So I'll be right back. So I just showed you guys an up close and personal view of my eye look and I am really, really digging this. I think I need to up my light just a wee bit. There we go. Um, I'm really digging what happened on my eyes today and I'm gonna tell you guys what my base products are and then I'm gonna run into the review because I know this video is already gonna be an obscene amount of time. So I use my Nomad Cosmetics, of course. For my bronzer, I used my Nabla Bronzer in Pro file and I used my Patrick Ta cream blush duo in do we know her and then as highlighter I used a highlighter from my Aurora glow kit in Hela Hela Helia the green so that is my base products on my lips is my Fenty liquid lipstick in on a veil so that's all the important things as for this palette i am very very happy that i got this palette and what i think a lot of people who just take a very cursory look at this or just test it out one or two times don't realize is that a lot of these neutrals are deceptive so this seemingly shimmer um that looks to be a champagne is actually a wicked blue reflect to it. Then you have this pretty neutral um, brown, but this brown over here, walking stick, is pretty much a green. That is the main crease color that is in 
my crease um and i only deepened it up today with spider which is a brown but because i deepened it up with walking stick it just came off to be like a deeper brown or a deeper green because spider has a warm undertone so i feel like a lot of people just don't give who haven't tried this palette or either that or have tried it and said that it's too neutral i feel like a lot of those people just purely did not give this palette enough um this scarab shade is a beautiful beautiful duochrome then you have some of these other shades i i mean i feel like i was so close my bad i will be doing so many more looks i will be reaching for this palette i am so so happy that I took the time to pay for this palette, do so many looks with the palette, and just learn a little bit more about this palette, just in general. Um, there is not one shade in this palette that I would not like, even the Tree Hopper shade, which is a beautiful brow bone highlight for me. It's even a really nice crease color for me. So this palette will effectively be sitting right next to my new setup um because i'm gonna need to be able to reach for this whenever i need a shade um because i'm pretty sure i'm pretty i feel confident enough to say that tree hopper is going to be my everyday brow bone highlight when i do carve my brows out with my mac paint pot um this, this palette is just, it's really, really nice. I would say if you like Sydney Grace's formula and you've wanted a palette, I would recommend this. And this is even me as a colorful person. I love color. I also do enjoy neutrals. And I feel like the types of neutrals that she has in this palette and the colors are just the best of both worlds. I am so, so happy that this is my first Sydney Grace palette palette i have had an obscene amount of their singles before so i already knew the formula but i never tried a palette from them i'm hoping that they do a couple more palettes that are just up my wheelhouse because then i will go ahead and purchase some more but that's pretty much it i didn't want this review to be too long hopefully you guys got the ins and outs and you guys saw the true integrity of this palette because i used every last shade at least twice some shades more than twice so yeah, I'm going to stop opening this, I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to say goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.